Let's talk to Michael in Florida. Michael, Hi. you're live with Eric and V. Hey, Hello? how you doing? Doing, doing well. Good. What yeah. did you want to talk about today? Yeah, hi. Hi, yeah. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if you remember uh, this, because from a few months ago, actually, I called, uh, I think it was probably last year. Um, at, at any rate, I'll just give you a little refresher. I was one of the um, uh, theistic callers who, and I said that I was in a place where I wasn't sure how much of my faith is, you know, based on true personal conviction and how much of it is just me following what I was told to believe in. And mm -hmm. last time I asked about prophecy because I'm like wrestling with some of the things that uh, I guess are usually cited as some of the stronger proofs of the veracity of the Bible. And um, I wanted this time to, to ask because I, I really was, I thought that there's like a myriad of things I wish I could talk to you guys about. I wanted to <laughs> um, That's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pick one for today and then you can call back in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I wanted to ask, because uh, I know this, like you said in the last time I called, that there is no unified or unilateral atheist answer to any one topic. But um, I, I wanted have to called in before. perhaps your guys' take when people, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to know at least uh, your guys' take on when people cite, say, for instance, uh, contemporary accounts, like it's contemporary events, supernatural events, like, you know, when people say like, oh, there's like an exorcism or there was a, a demon possession or a miracle and like, you know, and weird shit started happening, like furniture started moving or somebody levitated. I, I've heard. I've heard Coke bottle comes you know, across the... Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? Uh, referencing another yeah. caller. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said they saw a Coke okay. bottle flying around. Two the liter bottle of Pepsi just levitate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, I've heard, um, especially like in church, like people talking during uh, services, like in testimonies or sometimes pre pastors preaching, telling about, you know, events where usually it's like a center on demon possession or like, you know, people like skin turned like really hot where they started wielding like supernatural strength or, or, or you know, I don't know. It, it, there's a whole list of types of events that are cited as like, sure. and this yeah. is usually seen as like to say that, oh yeah, they're definitely in the spirit. So I don't know what you guys take on that usually might be. I'm pretty sure well, there are multiple accounts of that. Oh. Like that. Absolutely, absolutely, and and a lot of those are known phenomena. Uh, it's not just a, a a Christian experience; it's a human experience, and it's something that we find a misattribute um, cause for all of the time. Uh, one example uh, that I can give you is um, uh, what is it? Cult leaders, right? There are cult leaders who who after after you know things break up there are members former members of the cult who know you know this was a fraud this person did not have magic powers or whatever the case was right this this person wasn't the second coming but they'll still swear up and down that they saw this person perform miracles something entirely unexplainable right the the i and they find themselves in that interesting situation where they say, hey, you know, I saw this miracle. How do I explain it? And because of that, that means that we, we have now a similar phenomena. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine what the cause comes from. And so what we need to do is we need to first establish what are the different possible causes? And then what is the most likely? And, and we kind of move from there. So is God a possible cause of something, right? Uh, so, so let's say, uh, give me a miraculous event uh, or, or a demon possession. You're talking about demon possession, right? Right, yeah. Cool. Okay, what are possible oh. causes for that? Well, uh, we know that there are a number of uh, mental um, uh, disorders and, and, and things like that that have caused uh, things like that, right? Somebody could uh, be epileptic and have seizures and um, be mis you know, misattributed to um, a demon possession. Um, do we have evidence of actual demon possession, though? I don't think we do. Like, we don't, we actually don't have that. You know, we, we, we can look at the DSM, we can, we can evaluate, but... Outside of Hollywood, I, we don't have demon possession like that. What you have is misattribution of causation. Like in terms of like documented evidence. Well, I mean, documents are a good, um, you know, uh, video. <laughs> it was even like. Well, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. 
right? I know I say that a lot. Here's the thing. It's going to show up on one of those bingo boards. Um, if demon possession were a real thing, it wouldn't matter that it was supernatural necessarily. It would still be talked about as a possible cause of a thing, right? So somebody starts hearing voices, right? And they go to a psychiatrist or psychologist and they're like, you know what? I'm hearing voices and I don't know what's going on. I'm, you know, all these weird things are happening to me. That, that psychologist is going to go through the list of things that could be, you know, happening to them. It could be auditory hallucinations. It could be, you know... Um, schizophrenia right it could be a whole bunch of different things and they're going to go down that checklist and say okay we're going to test you for these things we're going to see if it's one of these if demon possession was a thing demon possession would just be on that list be like okay well maybe it's demon possession but that's not how that works we only say demon possession when we don't have that checklist when we don't know what else could be wrong it's a catch-all for I don't know. And yeah, that's scary. It's scary when something's happening to you or someone you love and it, and you don't know what's going on and there's no answers, right? And so the metaphor of demon possession is very poignant and it can feel very much like there's a malicious force there or something's targeting you, but it's not an actual diagnosis. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is that it has not been proven to be real. In the same way that the humors... Uh, have not been proven to be real. You don't uh, you find people saying, well, th this person has an excess of black bile. What we need to do is, uh, is, is go from there. Um, we, we, th this person has too much mucus. Mm -hmm. uh, this person has too much blood. Well, sometimes, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and, and because of that, yeah, we, we go through that checklist and, and um, the humors are not on that list anymore. They were. Not anymore. Right. Yeah. So would you would you then say that when people give accounts of like supernatural stuff happening, like I don't know, like you said, someone said earlier, like something levitating or whatever, is that would you? I'm, I know you probably wouldn't be didactic about what that what that is, but um, would you then probably like think that's like a, a I don't know, probably just like a hysterical recollection of, of an event, like maybe people. Were, well, I I, I, I wouldn't. Know, I don't know. I wouldn't put the word hysterical in front of it because your memories change. You know, we had a caller last week who said that they thought that they had seen demons in the woods. Mm -hmm. And our response to him was, you should investigate that. I mean, there's there's no reason why you shouldn't. And I, I think that's, if they, they can now. Now it is my assumption that they're going to investigate it and probably not be able to replicate it. Or they won't be able to replicate replicate the causal, you know, link that they thought was there. Um, but that that that's where we would go if somebody had said, "Hey, you know, I experienced this supernatural thing. Let's investigate it." Wouldn't that be the right thing to do? Right. But we don't say, "Hey, I'm going to believe your specific interpretation," um, you know, right out of the gate. You, we, we investigate those things. The only time we in, uh, believe that specific interpretation like that is if it is if if the if the person is in imminent danger, you know, something like that. If somebody says they're a victim of assault, you know, you need to take them out of the situation. Okay, you pull them out and then you investigate, but you'd still investigate. Right. Are you? Do you agree? Okay. Well, yeah, I, I, I do agree. It's just, you know, I, I suppose maybe because. Um, that um, what, what, what I described of where I am personally in my life is, is that um, I'm sort of like wrestling with um, like questioning my faith, which I grew up with. Um, uh, sometimes I, I, I guess maybe when it came to my understanding of like supernatural events or my like confidence in the existence of those things, mm -hmm. you know, it was always just like, you know, what other people told me, it was an anecdote of what other people um, told mm -hmm. other people. And, um, um, and I, sometimes I'm, I'm trying to like uh, determine if is it reasonably safe to just dismiss a, a lot of those as you know, oh, that's just people saying stuff, or whatever. Because um, maybe it was just because I was a kid when I heard a lot of these things. Maybe it was just you know the social imposition or um, of like say like the authority of my parents or other yeah. adults who told me these sort of stories. Um, uh, you know, then, like, I don't know what I, is it, like, we just dismiss these things, or is it like, would that sort of like be, um, I don't know, like putting my fingers in my ears, so to speak, and just like denying 
sort of thing that we're told we can come. We always have to make sure we're not doing that, thing. right? No matter what our worldview is, we have to make sure we're not only looking at things that uh, like back up our position. But I want to maybe wrap this up with a. <laughs> This is something I've noticed about myself more and more recently, and I think that this is where a lot of that that conversation kind of breaks down between theists and at least me personally as an atheist. When I, I have a different worldview now, it's not just the God belief. I don't need to know things. The idea that I don't know things is not a bad one. And so that takes a lot of pressure off of needing to find things to believe that are true, right? So for me, I don't need to feel like I believe, I, I know everything. And so that has taken away the desire to believe things so I feel like I know things, right? And so if you say this person levitated and was possessed by a demon, I don't need to say, oh, I need to, I need to know about this, like this, I need to know something for sure. So I'm going to go with something and I'm going to believe it, whether that's God, whether that's a demon, whether that's hallucination or uh, a breakdown or whatever. I'm not going to pull one and hold on to it and believe it and say, okay, now I know this thing and I feel secure and now I can move on. I am okay saying that's weird. Hmm. I don't know. Right. I have other things I care about. I don't, there is nothing about that that me, that, ugh. there is nothing about that that will impact my life personally unless better evidence is presented. And so I'm okay to just let it go and admit that I do not know more than I know. And so I think a big component to these conversations is the understanding that I don't have the desire to know everything or to feel like I know everything. And so I'm okay not substituting knowledge for belief. Mm -hmm. I can substitute knowledge for not knowledge. Yep. And you do it all the time. It's just something that maybe you haven't really placed here. You know, somebody said that they believed that aliens abducted them. Are you going to call them a liar? Is that what you, is that, what would you immediately assume that they're lying to you? No. Uh, I wouldn't maybe say lying because that implies an intent of deception. They have to say that they're mistaken. I don't know. <laughs> well, and, and it is possible that they're mistaken. And so that's where you would go is, okay, how do we go about, you know, learning about this? And, and, and I think that's where right. I would want it to be. Uh, I, I was raised in a culture where people gave their testimonies and they would, they, they would give all of these, these assertions that, oh, God worked in their life in these mysterious ways. And see, there's no, you know, it was mysterious and there, therefore it's, it's God sending it. I, I love your note. Um, but ultimately it, falls in the same category as somebody saying that they got abducted. I, you know, okay, I'm, I'm not going to call you a liar. What I am going to do is wonder, I think, Michael, you said it perfectly. You know, what if you're mistaken? Let's look into it. Because that's the thing that we are socially conditioned not to do, is you nod your head and go, oh, yeah, no. Oh, praise God. Oh, geez, that is just so amazing. No, you don't do that for anything else. And I don't think you would, you would, appreciate somebody doing that with with uh, the claim that aliens uh, you know abducted them so don't do it here at least be you know um, oh what's the word at least be consistent in your life when it comes to claims that are kind of wild okay yeah but Michael All right. yeah. I, thank you for calling in yeah 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 <laughs> Thank you for calling again. Call. Take care, man. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, peace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Before, so we've got a couple. Man, why is it that we get so far into the show and then we get a whole bunch of good callers? I we we well we got good callers up until, but you know what I mean. When it comes to volume, they all kind of trail in later. But yeah. Anyway, I think it's time to thank our patrons before we move to our next call. What do I you think? I think so. All right. I am refreshing. And let's thank our top five patrons. Um, because we do have holiday specials, that means this is the last time we're going to do this uh, on air for Talk Heathen like this. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to thank Eric Tweet. Uh, by the way, they're not telling me to tweet. That is their actual name. They messaged us. <laughs> <laughs> um, Desert Heathen, Bethany P., Jay Friedman, Ward 
and Ward Knippling. Uh, you are our top five patrons. Thank you so much. And V, I know your your favorite is the next. <laughs> Balaam's donkey and Dingleberry Jackson. Oh yes, right up there with the rest. <laughs> Thank you. It's your support that keeps us going, and we sincerely appreciate it. If you want to support us, you like what we do, consider becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com slash talkheathen to me. That's patreon.com slash talkheathen to me. All right. Are we ready to move on to the next call? I do want to make sure that we clarify. This is the last time we're going to do this in 2020. Not the last time we're going to do this, period. True. <laughs> we will be back in 2021. Absolutely. And we're still doing stuff this year. We're just going to be doing right. something really special. Exactly. <laughs> 